So Jens, we get back to this is the gold standard in camera package design. Last time we talked about a camera like that, we were talking about getting these cameras from in front of your face onto your shoulder. Really, this is kind of the next step. This thing is balanced. It's a bit heavy. I don't particularly like that. But I've got zoom control, focus control, right. start, stop. I've got camera control here. And I know it's a longer camera than today's cameras, but it's literally on your shoulder instead of in front of you. Right. So, so what that means <laughs> is... Try that baby. The on. recoil concept. Yeah. All right. So if you can see where the shoulder here, I'll just put it on. The idea here is, is everybody wants you know a camera that's going to look a little more filmic. This has a much larger sensor, so it's going to be better in low light. It's going to look more filmic. When the camera is on your shoulder, we call that a recoil. But in order to get the camera on your shoulder, we got a couple of problems. Well, the camera is out of my reach, so focus is an issue. You can't see anything. Right. I can't use the viewfinder or even a Z finder on the back of the camera like we used to do. Right. So you need uh, an EVF that's kind of like next to the lens. You need focus control down where you can reach it. And in this case, we're using a Tornado so that you never have to let go of the grip. The grip is your focus device. Right. And then you need camera control in the, in the right hand to uh, at least do start, stop, and a few other basic functions. But the biggest benefit to this, I think, is now we've shortened the rig and made it nice and small like these cameras originally started. Exactly. And you don't need to add dumb weight, counterbalance, and all that stuff. Right. Well, let's talk about why we did these things the way we did them. Let's start with this part we call the axis, which is our EVF mount. Now, the axis will work with any EVF. It'll work with an Alphatron, a Cineroid, a small HD. Mm -hmm. Check out the video that's basically just about the axis, too, to see all of its right. uh, features. The way we design this axis is that it has many abilities to adjust itself forward, and you can take it all the way back and use it like an eyepiece leveler. It's got the farthest reach of any of these mounts. And it's very intuitive in the way that you actually turn it. People have asked, well, why, don't, why can't I just use my magic arm or my Zacuto arm? But there's one release and then everything gets soft, which means you need two hands to make any adjustments. Here you have the individual control and you can dial in your tension for the individual arms with one hand. You know, if you have to, you could adjust it and mount it from the top like this. If you have like an 18 millimeter lens or something really wide, you can see here uh, clears. that the clearance is really far away from the lens. One of the things I never really liked about the ENG style cameras is that when you're on the tripod, you were hunched way over forward mm -hmm. and it was not very comfortable on your back. But now with the access, you can unfold the arm and stand comfortably behind the camera. The second feature that we designed is what we call our Z drive. Well, now that you have the camera on your shoulder in a recoil configuration, you obviously can't use a traditional follow focus right up, you know, in my face here. And the Z-Drive is really your baby, Jens, with this U-Joint technology. I mean, it's a basic technology, a U-Joint, but we're using it in a different way, where it's just giving us an angle without gears. Well, and the beauty of this is that we wanted to design something that is so quick to be able to turn into this hand grip idea, where in other words, where you have two hand grips, and one of the hand grips is actually your focus. Now, it has a lot of options, too you can flip it around and send it backwards so that when you're on a tripod now the angle is going to where you want it. So the other feature that uh, you need when doing a recoil is obviously you have this hand grip over here and you want to move whatever camera control you can depending on the camera you're using down here so that again you don't have to let go or reach back to the camera. So here we have an Oki device, and the recoil really benefits these DSLRs probably the most. But the Oki device here obviously gives you the start and stop, uh, some menu functions. Um, you iris control. Iris control. You can do your magnification for focus. All those types of things that you want to not have to let go for and do on the fly. Now when you go to other cameras like the C500, 300, you're going to use uh, our grip relocator to relocate their grip, and then you have all kinds of camera control. The Sony FS700 and FS100 also have grip relocators that we make. So besides a grip now for stability, you have that camera control. You never have to touch the camera. Right. I mean, it's a proper camera now. <laughs> These are the things that we need. In a DSLR, we use this half cage right here, you see, to support the EVF and a hand grip on top and things Side like that. handle. And other accessories. You can mount with these, uh, these holes here, you can mount other accessories, sound devices, things like that. And with this hole here, you can mount one of our American arms for an onboard monitor. Or uh, mics, whatever it may be. 
Right. The nice part about the half cage is that it's kind of the last cage you'll ever buy because you made it rod based, which was a really good idea. Right. Well, so, a lot of these cages that are out there are very specific to, to a camera and then you're stuck. I mean, if you want to have several different cameras that you use this on, this again will outlast the cameras and travel from camera to camera. Well, the reason being because the, the arcs of the cage can collapse down to 5.5 inches for a small camera. Or up to 9 inches for a large camera. Right. So it's really an amazing thing. And again, its price point is very inexpensive. And it has this new kind of handle, which is really nice. Yeah. And with a DSLR, having this side handle, I mean, this here, you can see that the rig becomes extremely stable, plus having the top handle is the same thing. So you've got a lot of stability where this camera's just going along for the ride now. It's not like where you used to grab the camera and it's just does these cameras are just accessories to our rigs as i always say <laughs> but these cameras are not very stable you need to basically build everything yeah. around it so that the camera is just going along for the ride right uh, one other thing to mention about the half cage is that uh, having it on the rods uh, allows you to slide it to where the center of gravity is uh, so that you can balance that out. Uh, other cages that are fixed to the to the base plates or to the camera itself can't do that. Well, and you have another option here that when you loosen the hand grip, you can flip it around and you can also have the ability to move the center of gravity that way. Right. Uh, and all this stuff breaks down with like extreme speed. I mean, like, look, I can take this apart um, the whole rig in a matter of minutes, right. you know. Well, including going onto a tripod. Shoulder pad comes off, you click it into our tripod adapter. Using our new wedge plate. Right, officially known as our QR dovetail plate. The wedge plate here works with really right stuff, Kessler, and of course our tripod adapter plates. Right. This shoulder pad is a, another new product that's kind of key in the recoil too. Mm -hmm. When you throw it up on your shoulder here, when you flip this switch here to the middle position, you have the ability to really fine tune the center of gravity of the rig and then you can just lock it by going forward. Let me show them this recoil. Here's a, another version. Here's an epic recoil. This is really the way to use this camera because it keeps it small. Oh, I know. This is, this is wonderful. That is one camera that really needs to be on your shoulder no right. matter what. This is so comfortable right now. I'm focusing. I can hold this thing super still. And you can get this bomb in more places than their arms can do. Now, uh, the, the C300 and the uh, C500 and C100, they're all very similar body, you know, kind of a block like that. And so the recoils for that works the same. And in this version, look at how small this rig is. It's way smaller than that ENG camera, and it has battery power on it. I mean, yeah, look at the difference here. Well, this has a bit more lens, but still. No, the point is, before we had to counterbalance them, and that sucked. Right. So this is the recoil system, something that we've been working on for about a year and a half now, mm -hmm. figuring out all the points, which is, you know, camera control, focus control, optical control, power, shoulder, shoulder pla pad placement. And it's done. I feel great about it now. And I think this is going to be the way of the future here, recoiling. It's how handheld should be done. Exactly. <laughs>